Silence, fire spreading about, alarms in Konoha going off, ninjas rushing to defend their home against the mighty QB. These were the thoughts that went through the Yandaimi Hokage's mind as he prepared for battle. He gathered his things and his daughter, newly born and taken from his wife, Kashina Uzumaki, Natumui was about to experience a night that she would never forget. Hokage's office, you ready Minato? Asked the Yandaimi sensei, Jiraiya, as he stood in the doorway. Almost sensei. I just need to release all my chakra seals so that I'll be able to perform the Shiki Fuin. What Minato didn't see was the Sandame Hokage, Hirazan Serutobi, sneak up behind him and deliver a devastating chop to his neck. Sorry Minato, but you have a life ahead of you. In addition your daughter will need you more than ever now that QB will be sealed into your daughter, spoke Serutobi as he caught a falling Minato. With those words he took baby Natsumi and whisked her to the Battle of the QB. Battlefield, summoning Jutsu was heard with a puff smoke following close behind it. Out of the smoke came the summons of the Sandame Hokage and his student Jiraiya of the Sani. Why have you summoned me here you little bra? T, a mad Gamabunta ground out with a puff of smoke coming out of his nostrils. I concur with, Bunta. Seru Tobi why are we facing one of the nine demons of hell? I am sorry, Bunta, but we need your help so that we can seal the QB away into Natsumi. To do that however, Seru Tobi will be sacrificing all of his life force to do it, replied a terrified Jiraiya as he had no wish to go against Bunta. Very well we shall help you with this task. But Jiraiya make sure that Natsumui becomes my summoner. I too will help, stated Enma the Monkey King, but I want Naruto, the oldest to be my summoner. I'm gonna need someone new with Seru Tobi deciding to go out of the business. Get ready guys, here he comes. With a roar the great QB restarted its rampage. However, fortunately for Konoha the QB was held down by Enma and Bunta. Meanwhile Seru Tobi performed the Shiki Fuin. With his last breath he told Jiraiya that he wanted Minato and Kashina to treat Naruto the same as they would treat Natsumi. Hi Sensei. I will make sure to give this message to Minato. He will treat Naruto the same as they treat Natsumi. Hokage's office. The years in between. Naruto at 8 years. Come on Naruto, Natsumi, we're going to the park. Hey Ka-san when when you train Natsumi, can you train me as well? Sorry Naruto-chan, but you don't need any training. You can start at the academy. Natsumi needs to learn to control the chakra of the Kayubi. TT that's okay Ka-san. I think that I won't go to the park. I need to go do some studying. Later Ka-san. I'll come by later on. Okay, Naruto. We'll see you later. With that she left to take Natsumi to the park. However Natsumi stayed behind to say something to Naruto. See big brother, I am better than you. They want me more than they want you. You are nothing. They wouldn't care if you went and died in a hole. Tomorrow. If you truly believe that sister, then we are no longer fit to call ourselves, family, anymore. However, I will surpass you someday. Remember that. Well sister. Soon you will wish that you had me as an ally. I will make sure that you regret this. Time skip 2 weeks location. Training ground 7. Silence. A leaf blows in the wind, then suddenly bam. The sound breaks the silence. Naruto flies through the air working on combining the taijutsu. Styles of his parents. The electric dragon striker. He created this taijutsu style by combining his mother's dragon death striker style and his. Father's electric wind striker style. The style was one that combined and utilized speed, agility, and unpredictably solid strikes. He was flying through. The air trying to cut through a leaf with only his body strength. There was no chakra or elemental manipulation behind each strike. Only pure. Taijutsu. Ever since he was told that he would never receive any extra training, Naruto decided to work his ass off to make sure that he would be able to keep up with Natsumi when he entered the academy. But as the day neared its end he decided to take a break. Hmm, I think I'll go to the park for a break. I wonder if I'll meet any new friends. With that he started his run towards the park. As soon as he reached there, he saw three families already there. The Nara clan, the Akamichi clan and the Yamanaka clan. As he walked up to the park, he saw three kids playing with each other. The first kid was a big boned, a, n or fat as some other people call him, kid with red hair. He also looked very chubby. The next one was a short kid with a ponytail. All he was doing was sitting there watching the clouds while muttering under his breath when the big boned kid told him that he needs to stop being lazy, a, n in this fic choji is a big brother figure to Shikamaru. The last one was a girly with light blonde hair and light blue eyes. He walked up to them and said, hello, my name is Naruto, may I be allowed to play with you? 
The three kids just looked at him weirdly. Why do you speak so formal? It's not like we're going to be mad at you if we don't speak formally. By the way my name's Ino. Ino Yamanaka. The big boned kid is Choji. The lazy bum is Shikamaru. Do you have any parents? Replied Ino. Yeah, I do have parents. But they're usually not around, especially my two San. He's usually helping my younger sister or at work. I only see my Ka San during mealtimes. The only family member I see constantly is my brat of a sister. Though I wonder if we are even related at all. Why is that Naruto-san? Asked Choji. Please call me Naruto. I don't like formalities. The reason I don't like my sister is because she is always saying that I'm not good enough. That I could go die and my parents wouldn't care. I just hope she is wrong, responded Naruto. Choji, Ino, Shikamaru. Time to go, yelled Choza Akamichi, father of Choji. Coming, the three kids yelled back. Well see you later. It was fun talking to you, Naruto said with a smile. Ino was about to leave when she stopped to ask a question. Wait, you never told us your full name. Oh, my name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. With that he turned and ran away. Ino stood there in shock. This Naruto person was the son of the Hokage. Yet he was mistreated by his own family. His family members didn't even care to make time for their oldest son. She wondered what kind of family could do that as she ran to her father to go home. At that moment her father decided to ask Ino about the boy she was talking to. So Ino, who was that boy you were talking to? Asked Inoichi. Oh that was Naruto. He asked us if he could play with us, but when I asked if he had a family he told us a really sad story. Really, honey? What was it? Oh nothing much, just the fact that he is neglected by his own family and abused by his sister. When I say abused, I mean the fact that she says that he could die the next day, and his parents wouldn't even care. I see. Did he tell you his last name? I'll see if I can help his situation. That might be a problem because of who his family is too san. Really? I doubt it. Well could you do anything about it if he's the neglected son of the Hokage? Did you just say the son of the Hokage? Asked Inoichi as his eyes widened by about an inch. Yeah dad, I did. He says that he doesn't see the Hokage much because he's either too busy with work or he's spending time with his daughter. But, he seemed kind of happy when he said that. I don't think that he likes his family that much. I don't know why he would be happy that they left him. Alone though. I would think that he's sad that they left him. Well honey, only time will tell. For right now, let's go home before your mother butchers me about being late. Location. Hokage's mansion. It was 6.30 when Naruto returned home. The first thing that he saw was his family glaring at him. What did I do? Naruto yelled after a minute of them glaring at him non-stop. What's wrong you ask? His father replied, what's wrong is that you've been gone every day for a whole two weeks. I want to know where you have been going and what you were doing today. Well I was at the park this evening. As for where I've been going, that's none of your concern. Why? Because you haven't given a damn about me before. So why should you now? I'm going to my room. With that he ran up to his room. Naruto's room. I wish I had a special power like Natsumi so that they would give me attention. But you do have a special power. You just need to find it, said a voice as Naruto fell asleep. It was a dark room in which Naruto appeared. There was a few candles but they did not burn brightly. You could hear the water dripping like it was. On loudspeaker. The room was darker than midnight. It was as cold as it is on a dark winter night. But at the back of the room there was a very large and tall cage. But there was nothing that could be seen in it. Until a loud roar started coming from the cage. Ruar. WW who's there? I am warning you. I can defeat you in this mindscape since I am the master of my mind. Ha 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 ha. You are very funny for a human. You think that you can defeat me just because this is your mind. Well sorry to burst your bubble that isn't true. Well then at least show yourself so that I can see who it is that can defeat me in my own mind. For you to be able to do that is a great feat. A truly great feat it is indeed. Very well human I will grace you with my presence. I am the Jubi, the ten-tailed dragon. Yes it's true that the nine-tailed beasts are a deviation of me. But I a what? Then how are you a ten-tailed beast? I thought you were defeated at the beginning of the ninjas. You were defeated by the savior of this world. You were split into nine separate entities. You were sealed Ein at the first ninja. Your Jinchuriki was the Rikudo Senen. Indeed, that all happened in this timeline. What do you mean backquote this timeline? I am from a different dimension in which I had not battled Yami. However to prevent myself from fighting him, I ripped a hole in the space-time vortex to find an appropriate host for me. Then I found you. You were the perfect host because you would have to endure the hardships of being neglected by your pitiful excuses for parents and being beaten up by that ugly whore you call a sister. However Yami and Kami in their all-powerful wisdom decided to bestow upon you some very powerful gifts. I can tell you what Yami gave you, but not what Kami gave you. 
I would tell you but Kami has forbidden it unlike Yami. Yami has given you the ability to manifest a sword that will represent your soul. Once you do that you will be able to do techniques called Kido. In this there are many categories. There are Kido otherwise known as demon spells. There are Hado, which are destructive spells, and Bakudo, which are defensive spells. Next there are two levels to which you can advance to. There is Shikai which is like a bonding stage and will make you three to four times more powerful. After this is Bankai. Bankai is so powerful that it will make you five to ten times more powerful than when you are in your Shikai form. Oh and speak of the devil. Here comes the manifestation of your soul. Well I'll leave you two to chat. Yane. As soon as the Jubi said this he disappeared into thin air. But a dragon-like creature approached. However, this dragon did not look like it had any flesh or bones. In fact it looked like it was made up of arcs of electricity running up and down its body. Regardless though of the fact that it was not a solid creature, it looked as wise as Kami herself. Hello young warrior. My name is. Can you hear me? Sorry but could you run that by me again, I wasn't able to catch it. It sounded like Rariki or something. Young warrior, that is indeed my name. I, Rariki, hereby grant you, Naruto, the ability to use my power so long that your heart stays good and true. But before we finalize the usage of my powers I have a question. What do you fight for? I don't know what to fight for. R. I don't have anyone who I even remotely care about. Maybe if I had someone close to me I would fight to protect them. But right now, I don't think I can fight for someone else if I don't care for them. I mean my sister always berates me on how horrible brother I am. She says that I should give everything I own to her. Well Naruto, you passed my test, yet you didn't. You passed because you knew what you should fight for. You didn't pass the test. Because right now, you don't have anything to fight for. Oh. Okay. Hey can I get to know you better? I haven't had an easy time trusting people, but you seem alright. You and Jubi sound alright. Can I get to know you before I decide to trust you? Yes you can. I would have a hard time trusting people if I had to experience what you went through. Well I think I am about to wake up because of this pull I am feeling at my feet. Later Jubi, Rariki. See you later. With that Naruto disappeared. From his mindscape, he woke up to see a sword in his lap and a tattoo of a dragon surrounded by ten tails on his right shoulder. He grabbed the sword, strapped it to his back and left to go continue his practice on his new style, as well as start on a kenjutsu style. But as soon as he got downstairs, he immediately regretted coming down. His so-called family was waiting downstairs looking at him expectantly. What the heck do you want? I am just going to go out for the day. It's not like you care about what I do. After all, you neglected me and ignored me. You just want me back into your life because you've realized how empty your new life is without me in it. Face it. You cast me aside and you aren't getting me back. Besides, I don't want anything to do with the Yandaimi Hokage of Konoha. The only Hokage that passed away in the past 20 years that I respect is the Sandame Hokage. He was probably thinking that you wouldn't neglect me, but you've disregarded his last wish. The one that Jiraiya of the bumbling trio of idiots decided to omit. He said, don't you dare disrespect Jiraiya sensei. He was an honorable person. He would never omit any of the words that Sandame Sama told him that. Knight, yelled Minato as he defended the honor of his sensei. Well then, to San. Let's have him tell us. Ask him if he accidentally omitted something that the Sandame said on his deathbed. Call him now. As soon as Naruto spat out the words, a cloud of smoke appeared. Out of the smoke came the words of a wise sage, not. The great sage Jiraiya of Mount Myoboku arrives. Let all the ladies swoon as he basks in the glory. I am, shouted Jiraiya announcing his arrival until Naruto punched him in the gut. Cut the crap you old geezer. I want to know if the Sandame said anything concerning me the night he sealed the Kayubi into Natsumi. Shouted an annoyed Naruto, well he said that he wanted you to be the next summoner of the monkeys and also that you shouldn't have been treated any differently than Natsumi is. Why? Ha! I told you to San. I was right. The great bumbling sage Jiraiya did indeed omit a detail from his report of the night that the Sandame, Naruto yelled grinning when Jiraiya admitted that he didn't include all the details of the Sandame's wish. Well, I am going to be gone for the rest of the day, like I usually am. Later you fools. With that he took off out the door leaving a stunned group of adults and an angry sister behind him. As he ran to his training ground, he wondered what kind of kenjutsu style he would be using. However, when he got to training ground 7, he was shocked. Standing before him was Choji, Ino, and Shikamaru. It seems that he left a bigger impression than he thought. Hey guys, what are you doing here? We could ask you the same thing, Naruto. Why would you come out to a training ground and do shinobi stuff while other kids your age just goof around and play fake ninja games? Asked Ino's father. Well I do this to get stronger than my sister. I want to prove to my parents that I can be a someone too. 
I want to show them that I am good enough to be worthy of their attention. I hope that someday I will be able to step out of the shadow of my parents and sister. This last statement left everyone confused. What did your sister do that makes her better than you, Naruto? Inquired Choji. Well she only is the container of the Kayubi, the nine-tailed demon fox. Of course the fame of being a savior got to her head. She no longer is kind. She is always mean. But I don't care. So long as I am able to surpass her and my parents, responded Naruto with a face-splitting grin. Well, how you do plan on doing that without any help? We could help you Naruto, Repsonded Choza. Thank you for offering to help, but I already got some helpers in line. I am just waiting for them to arrive in Konoha. Now could you leave please? I really must start my taijutsu practice. But if you want to watch, just step off to the side. When he said that, everyone stepped off to the side. It seemed that they were interested in what a kid of age 8 could do. Suddenly Naruto started jumping off trees while at the same time punching. The trees which caused the leaves on the tree to fall towards the ground. But the leaves never reached the ground because Naruto would always cut the leaf into two with his godly taijutsu skills. As soon as he landed though, he took out his sword and just did what felt right to him. Suddenly, after what seemed like only five minutes, but was actually six hours, he finished his taijutsu kenjutsu practice and noticed the crowd watching his practice. Ino, Choji, and Shikamaru were wide-eyed while Inoichi, Choza, and Shikaku had fainted. Well Naruto, it seems that you will indeed catch up to your sister with the way you are practicing. We have to go home as it is getting late. Good. Bye Naruto. Bye Shikaku-san. I hope to see you at the academy sometime. After all it starts next week. I have to get home. Well see you later, replied Naruto. Before he ran home. But as soon as he got home, he got a huge surprise. Sitting there, waiting for him was his sister. Big brother, you are going to tell me what exactly you are doing. You are also going to tell me where exactly you've been going. You're going to tell me right now or there is going to be some major trouble between you and me. No, I don't think I will tell you what I've been doing. You're not worthy of knowing. No one in this family is worthy of the information. You, however, will never know what it is like to be neglected, then have your family want information on what you are doing. So you can just go sod off, spat in. Angry Naruto. With that he went to the his room so that he could have money to buy dinner. He then left to go to Ichiraku's ramen stand. As soon as he got there he was greeted by Ayame. Hello Ayame ne san, can I have a pork and beef ramen? Sure Naruto. I'll have that out in a second. As he waited for the ramen, Ayame talked with Naruto. So Naruto, when are you starting the academy? Do you know anyone who's going to the academy with you? Oh yes I know some kids who are going to be attending the academy with me starting next week. Their names are Ino, Choji, and Shikamaru. So, how has your name been Ayame ne san? Well that's very good. I'm sure that you will be a very good ninja. I have had a very good day. The ramen I've sold today is 20 beef, 26 pork, 13 miso, 12 vegetable and 21 chicken. So I think that I have had a really great day because of all the ramen I've sold today. How was your day, Naruto? My day was very good Ayame ne san. I was able to play with Choji, Ino and Shikamaru. I also got to practice my new taijutsu style as well as learning a kenjutsu style. Beep. The ramen was ready. Well Naruto, you better eat up. You don't want to be malnourished for your taijutsu kenjutsu practice tomorrow, now do you. With that she left, Naruto to devour the ramen like a wild beast that has been starved for a year. As soon as he finished, Naruto paid for his ramen and went home to prepare for his day. That night, Naruto visited Jubi and Rariki. Location. Naruto's Mindscape. Hey Jubi, Rariki, yelled Naruto as he appeared in his Mindscape in front of Jubi and Rariki. Hello Naruto. We decided that tonight we would tell each other about ourselves. I have volunteered to go first. I am Jubi. I like training. To protect those precious to me and eating dango. My hobbies are playing pranks and causing mischief. My dislikes are those who think. That they are those who kill just because they can. My dream is to make sure that you become a great ninja. Your turn Rariki. My name is Rariki. I like protecting those who can't protect others. My hobbies is pranks. My dislikes are those who want to hurt others. My dream is protect all who can't protect themselves. Now you go Naruto. My name is Naruto. I like training and eating all kinds of ramen. My hobbies are reading, practicing my new taijutsu style as well as taking care of my new sword. My dream is to become the best ninja that I can possibly become. So can you guys teach me any jutsu? I haven't really taken time to learn any jutsu yet. I've just been working on my taijutsu and kenjutsu. So can you please teach me a jutsu? Yelled Naruto exuberantly. Ha 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 ha. You are very funny when you are excited. I will teach you a juts that only you will be able to use because of the fact that I am. 
your Zanpakuto, but I won't teach it to you today. Today we are going to go meet some very special people. I won't spoil the surprise. Though, they should arrive in about 3 minutes. About 2 and a half minutes later, two women appeared in a bright light. The first had long, blonde hair. To Naruto she looked like an angel in human form. She had a very tall and athletic build that was complemented by her charming smile. The second woman had long silver hair. To Naruto, she looked like a pretty devil in human form. Like the other woman, she had a very athletic build and had a pretty good height that was complemented by a sadistic smile. Hello Naruto-kun. We are the gods of this world. I am Yami while the one who looks like she wants to coddle you like a mother is Kami. Stated Yami while Kami blushed at the statement. Well Naruto-kun, what do you like to do and what do you wish for? Asked Kami. Well I like eating ramen and training. But I wish for a loving family that will not neglect me or abuse me, then want all information on what I do once. I leave their lives, but I don't think you can give me that without erasing who they are right now. Besides I don't like my biological family anymore. They are just a bunch jerks who need to know when to stay out of other people's business. Well Norto, spoke Juby, we can give you a new family. But the famil structure would be kind of weird. Kami and I have been talking about this because we knew that's what you probably were going to ask. Well I would be the dad and Kami would be the mom because we both want to the best for you. Rariki and Yami are going to be your siblings. This is because they like you, are prone to cause chaos and trouble. Happy beginning of Naruto's family, as soon as he said that, Naruto ran to Kami and cried into her arms while saying, thank you, over and over again. Well Naruto, I think it's time for you to wake up. You'll have to train today. Time skip. Next week first day of academy. As Naruto entered the academy he saw the two people he did not want to meet. Natsumi and Sasuke were arguing who was better at ninjutsu. I am better since I know how to do 5 fire style jutsu, Natsumi. No you aren't. True, you know more jutsus than I do, but mine are more destructive jutsu, responded Natsumi with an arrogant smirk. Well, I bet I could beat either of you in a pure taijutsu match at any time, came an unknown voice from behind them. They turned around to see. Naruto standing there with a smirk gracing his features. Oh really big brother? Why is that? You've never had any training in any of the ninja fields. I know because Tu San and Ka San only spend time with you during mealtimes, yelled Natsumi in anger. True. I didn't practice at all with Ka San or Tu San. But that doesn't mean that I never practiced. I worked on M Taijutsu on my own. After all, who? Did I have to come to get help? You didn't have anyone to help you because you are a lost cause you idiot. I wonder why your parents are even letting you come to the academy. You would only embarrass your family you loser, said Sasuke with a smirk. We'll see. I had best be going. I need to say hello to someone. With that he crossed the classroom to say hello to Choji, Ino, and Shikamaru. But, before he could say anything to them, an instructor came in and told them to take their seats. As soon as he was in his seat, the teacher began. Speaking. Okay everyone listen up. My name is Aruka Sensei and I will be teaching for the next four years until you become ninja. Let's begin. Aruka looked around at all of his graduating students. He saw Naruto in the corner sleeping with Shikamaru while Choji chomped away at his chips. Their teamwork together was impeccable. There was Sasuke and Natsumi with their egotistical and arrogant attitudes. There was Kiba who always tried to impress the girls, but when it came time to work, he could defeat almost anyone in Taijutsu. Then there was Hanada and Ino. They probably were the best Kunoichi that has come out of the academy save Natsumi. Then there was Shino and his quiet, yet wise ways. Well, started Aruka, I congratulate you all on becoming ninja of Konoha. But don't forget you are only genin. The teams this year have been chosen based on the teamwork you have displayed during your time in the academy. Team 7 will be Uzumaki Namakaze Natsumi, Uchiha Sasuke, and Inazuka Kiba led by Hataki Kakashi. Aruka waited for a reaction, but there wasn't any other than Kiba smirking. Akamaru just barked so Aruka continued. Team 8 will be Hayuga Hanada, Yamanaka Ino, and Aburum Shino led by Yuhi Kuranai, Ino and Hanada cheered and high-fived each other. Shino merely nodded in their direction. Team 10 will be Nara Shikamaru, Akamichi Choji, and Uzumaki Namakaze Naruto led by Gekko Hayate. Naruto and Shikamaru merely woke up and nodded. Choji just started to chomp at his chips even more furiously. Well, finished Aruka, you'll all have stay here and wait for your instructors. They'll be here in about. Oh wait a minute they're here now. Good luck. On your ninja journey. With that, two junin came into the room. One was a swordsman with a regular junin uniform. The other was a red-eyed junin. She wore strips of red and white cloth. Team 10 with me, spoke the swordsman, meet me on the roof. 
With that, the swordsman disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Oh yeah, cheered Naruto as he and his teammates walked up to the roof, we got a freaking bloody swordsman. We got the best instructor. Team 8, you are with me, spoke the red-eyed lady, meet me at the swing outside of the academy. Oh, and Team 7, you'll be waiting here for a couple of hours because Kakashi has a tendency to be 2 to 3 hours late to everything. With that, she too disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Leaving a furious Team 7. On the rooftop. Okay team, tell me about yourself. I'll go first. My name is Gekko Hayate. My likes are my girlfriend Azuki Yuago and Sushi. My hobbies are. Perfecting my sword skills. My dislikes are when people dis sword fighting and when my sword gets messed up. Okay you lazy bum, it's your turn. Troublesome. My name is Nara Shikamaru. I like doing nothing. My hobbies are staring at clouds. My dislikes are doing work. Go Choji while I. Take a nap. Munch. Munch. My name is Akamichi Choji. I like protecting my friends and attempting to out eat Naruto. My hobbies are eating chips. My dislikes. Are people who call me fat. Go Naruto. Huh? Oh my turn, right? My name is Uzumaki Namakaze Naruto. I like taking care of my sword and out eating Choji in food contests. My hobbies are pulling pranks on Natsumi and Sasuke of the arrogant clan. My dislikes are my family, especially my fucking sister. Hayate's eyes widened at this statement. Who could not like their own family? Well, said Hayate after getting over his shock, we have a survival exercise tomorrow morning starting at 6 o'clock in the morning at training. Ground 10. Don't be late or you'll be doing 20 laps around Konoha with Maida Guy as punishment. The fact that they would be running 20 laps around Konoha sent fear into Team Hayate's mind. They all nodded. Naruto went to their team training ground to train, while Choji and Shikamaru went home to rest. Hokage's mansion, 6 o'clock p.m. Bam! That was the sound that Naruto made as he marched into the Hokage mansion. Kashina came running out of the family room to see her son. Marching towards the kitchen. Uh, Naruto, what's wrong? Are you upset about your team placement? No. In fact, my team will be the best team since the Sanin. It's Natsumi that's making me so mad. I was training in the forest at training ground 10. My team training ground, and Natsumi and Sasuke come up to me and start to attacking me while I am executing one of my taijutsu attacks. But, when I defeated them, oh yes I defeated both of them on my own. They complained that I only beat them because they weren't using ninjutsu. I, want you to warn Natsumi, if she ever tries to pull a stunt like that again, I will kill her, replied Naruto with so much venom in his voice, it scared. Kashina out of her wits. Naruto then marched towards the kitchen to get something to eat. Kashina sighed and was about to go back to the family. Room, when Natsumi came into the house. Ka-san, whined Natsumi, can you punish Naruto? He attacked me and Sasuke while we were training in the forest. We were even on our team. Training ground. Natsumi, breathed Kashina slowly, are you telling the truth? Of course, Ka-san, relied Natsumi, why do you ask? I ask because your brother just told me that you attacked him, so who is telling the truth? Did you attack him? Tell me now Natsumi. If you don't, I'll assume that you did it no matter what. Confess and your punishment won't be as bad, yelled Kashina. Okay, Sasuke and I attacked Naruto while he was training on his training ground. But why does that matter? I am the savior of the village. I can do anything that I want, relied an arrogant Natsumi. What? Uzumaki Namakaze Natsumi. You are grounded for a month. Go to your room. I don't want to see you down here for the rest of the night yelled a furious kashina next day 5 45 a.m hey chomper bum naruto called out as he jogged up to training ground 10 hey ryu what's up asked choji nothing much i just kicked natsumi's ass yesterday and my parents didn't punish me for it so it's all good this sent both shikamaru and choji into shock naruto's parents not punishing naruto for beating his sister that never happened however a person appeared in a cloud of smoke interrupted their thoughts hello team said hayate as the smoke from the body flicker jutsu disappeared here is the survival exercise goal you are to obtain one of two bells from me this means that one of you will be going back to the academy begin when i drop my hand this mission statement scared the team one of them would be going back to the academy what was going on then when hayate dropped his hand naruto choji and shikamaru jumped away into the trees Hayate looked around and saw he could not find a trace of his students or their chakra. Meanwhile in the trees, Naruto traveled to Choji. Pissed. Choji. Forget what Hayate sensei just told us, we have to work together to get those bells. I mean, how can we, a single genin defeat a trained elite junin? The answer is that we can't. 
Let's go tell Shikamaru so that we can formulate a plan to capture Hayate Sensei. Choji nodded in. Agreement. They then jumped through the trees to find Shikamaru. They ran into Shikamaru as he was trying to find them. Okay, Shikamaru, Naruto said, this the plan. First, Choji and I will drive Hayate Sensei into the shadow of a tree. When he gets there, you use your shadow possession jutsu to capture him. Everyone understand the plan? Everyone nodded, confirming their knowledge and understanding of the plan. Choji and Naruto jumped out of the trees to ready their attack on Hayate. Meanwhile Shikamaru got behind Hayate to get ready to use his body possession jutsu. Hayate sensei, Naruto yelled, we will take those bells from you, no matter what it takes. Dragon wind strike. With that, Naruto propelled himself forward in spinning motion while using wind elemental manipulation to give Hayate multiple cuts. Choji then initiated his own attack. Partial body expansion jutsu. After using his jutsu his two arms expanded to create two large towering arms and fists. Choji jumped towards Hayate and slammed both of his fists into where Hayate was standing. To avoid Choji's fists, Hayate jumped backwards into the shadows of the trees. But when he saw Naruto's smirk, his widened in realization. Shadow possession jutsu called Shikamaru. He then walked out of the shadows of the trees to let Hayate see him. Next, Choji grabbed the bells while Naruto held his sword to Hayate's neck, preventing Hayate from making any sudden movements. Well team, started Hayate, you all pass with flying colors. Not only were you able to get the bells from me, but you worked together flawlessly. We start missions tomorrow. Yane. With a cloud of smoke, Hayate disappeared to go to the Hokage's office. Hokage's office. Hayate appeared in the Hokage's office to see all the Junin there. Except for Kakashi. Two hours later, Kakashi appeared in the office reading his ICHAICHA book. Sorry I'm late. There was an old woman and a black cat that crossed my path, said Kakashi while giving a cheesy smile. Minato just sighed, let's get this over with. Who passed? Team 1, fail. Team 2, hospitalization. Team 3, fail. Team 4, fail. Team 5, fail. Team 6, failed. Team 7, pass, barely. Everyone looked around to see if the sky was falling. Kakashi never ever passed a single genin team. What was going on? Team 8, pass, satisfactory. Team 10, pass with flying colors. Everyone raised their eyebrows at this. No genin team had ever passed with flying colors in the history of Konoha. Well, Minato said after all the Junin instructors had given their reports, that's very good. I will want daily reports on the three rookie genin teams. Have a good day. Dismissed. Then Minato got up and flashed back home. Next week location. Forest, this is Ryu. I'm in position. Target is in sight. Ten feet in front of him there was a cat with a ribbon on her left ear that read, Tora. Ryu, this is Bum. Chomper and I are in position. Ready to take the target? Yes I am. Chomper, get ready. Mission capture Tora is a go. Suddenly Shikamaru used his shadow possession jutsu on the cat. Naruto and Choji then doggy piled on the cat, while at the same time Shikamaru released his jutsu. Shikamaru, Naruto said to Shikamaru using Anbu sign language, check to see if the puddles are a genjutsu. If it is dispel it. I'll tell you why later. Go. Shikamaru nodded and looked at the puddles of water and focused some chakra into them making them dispel, revealing the two demon brothers of the hidden mist. They attacked immediately, cutting right through their sensei, killing them. Naruto narrowed his eyes and gathered lightning chakra around his fists. Choji let's go. We need to get rid of this trash, permanently. Sorry Choji, but we can't afford to show any mercy right now. Lightning spiral strike. Naruto jumped up into the air and started spinning downwards to one of the demon brothers, while producing lightning around his body. Naruto then gorged a hole right through the first demon brother's stomach, killing him instantly. Partial expansion jutsu. Choji enlarged one of his arms and fist and crushed the other brother like a pancake. All the other genin except Shino were in shock. Naruto and Choji had just mercilessly killed two ninja on their own. They looked to see where their sensei's bodies were, only to find pieces of wood. Kurenai and Hayate jumped out of the trees and congratulated Naruto and Choji for not freezing up in battle. Kurenai was about to talk to Tizuna when Hayate shook his head. He looked at the rest of the team before speaking. Everyone, spoke Hayate getting the attention of all the genin, I will not force you to go this mission if you don't want to. This mission was officially ranked C class. But in reality, it isn't a borderline S rank mission. It was ranked C because Tazuna's village can't give us the money for an A rank mission. But we chose my team because Naruto is more proficient in using the sword than I am. His skill can match one of the seven swordsmen of the hidden mist. So, anyone want to continue with the mission? 
All the genin looked at each other before Naruto stood and said, Nothing is going to stop this mission. Not even the demon of the hidden mist will be able to stop this mission. I will go on. Choji? Shikamaru? You with me? They just smiled and nodded. We're with you to the very end, you should know this best of all Naruto, relied Choji. Then the rest of the genin stood up, indicating that they too wanted to continue on this mission. Hayate smiled and nodded, they then got back into formation and walked forward to the wave. When they reached the water, they got into a rowboat to get to the wave mainland. Soon after the boat started, they all saw a huge bridge. Tazuna-san, why is it that the bridge is so important that Gato is willing to hire missing Nin to kill you? Asked Shino. Well, you see, Wave is isolated from the rest of the elemental countries. Because of this, the people of Wave have no way to make a life for themselves or prosper. But if I was to build the bridge, then we would be able to prosper like normal people, replied Tazuna getting wide eyes from the genin. Pretty soon, they had to start walking towards Wave. However, before they could get all the way there, they ran into a two figures standing there. One was standing there with his sword resting on his shoulders. The other was a young girl sitting in a tree, sharpening her senbon needles. Hmm, what do we have here? The Genjutsu Mistress of Konoha and the Crescent Blade of Konoha, said the swordsman. The famed demon of the mist. It's always a pleasure to meet another swordsman, even though you are missing Nin. Naruto get our team and Kurenai's team into any formation. Naruto nodded. He positioned Team Kurenai directly around Tazuna, while his team was in the outside circle. Hayate nodded at Kurenai and charged towards Zabuza. Dodge, block, thrust, jump, slash down, slash upwards, jump back, slash at the feet, kick. These were the motions that Hayate was going through as he fought Zabuza. Kurenai wasn't having a good fight. She was having a hard time getting a lock onto the young girl to use one of her genjutsu. She was running when suddenly she fell down from getting hit at a pressure point with a senban needle. But as soon as she fell, Naruto rushed to take her place. But, before they fought, she asked him a question. Hello my name is No Name Haku. Young ninja, why do you fight? Naruto blinked before responding. I fight so that I can protect my precious people. The people who care for me, the people who don't just see me as the son of a Hokage or the brother of a savior. The ones who brought me from my darkness are whom I fight for. Yelled Naruto as he began his onslaught. He threw two smoke bombs to obscure his opponent's view. Then he jumped at the girl and knocked her out cold. He then created a pair of cuffs out of the wind and tied her to the tree. He then watched in horror as he saw Zabuza overpower Hayate and capture him in a prison made of water. Dot. He growled, drew his sword and attacked Zabuza with all his hatred. Zabuza, let my sensei go, strike of the heavenly dragon. He swung his sword in a sideways arc, releasing a chakra made attack that looked like a dragon, one. Zabuza's eyes widened in fear as the attack neared him. He held up his blade to block the attack. Zabuza's blade started to scream when the chakra dragon attack hit his blade. But when Zabuza thought that the attack was almost done, his blade broke in half. Naruto was about to rush in for the final blow when he heard clapping. Zabuza, Zabuza, Zabuza. I heard that you were the demon of the mist, but you were taken down by a bunch of brats. I expected more of you. You are no longer under my employment. You will die by the hands of all the bandits I brought with me. Goodbye and die, said Gato as he walked towards Zabuza with a cane. Kid, said Zabuza, surprising Naruto, lend me some kanai. I can't fight with a sword now so I'll just use some kanai. I will take him to hell with me. Also, could you take care of Haku for me? She deserves a better life. Naruto nodded and handed Zabuza three kanai. Zabuza just grinned and put one in his mouth and the other two in his hands. Then he ran towards the bandits. Dodge, cut, stab, duck, jump, weave, slash, crosscut, kick, stab. This was how Zabuza fought through the army of bandits to get through to Gato. When he finally got through to Gato, he jumped on him and stabbed him with all three kanai, two through the throat and one through the heart. As Zabuza passed, he smiled, I killed the bane of the wave. Country. Naruto went and picked up the pieces of Zabuza's sword walked over to Haku. He released the jutsu that was binding Haku to the tree. He then told her what had happened to him. So Haku what will you do now that Zabuza is dead? Will you become a missing nin? Or will you find a village to join? If you want to join a village, will you consider coming home with me? I would love to work with you as a leaf nina, asked Naruto. Haku thought for a while before coming to a decision. I will come home with you. But, can you find a place that I and get Zabuza's sword fixed? It's the only thing that I have of him. Naruto just smiled at her and nodded. Kurenai sensei asked a quiet, yet calm Shino, why would Naruto's parents shun him? Who is Naruto? What did his sister do? 
No one noticed. That Haku quietly left while Kuranai was answering her questions. Well, Shino, as you probably know his name is Uzumaki Namakaze Naruto. He is the brother of the Kayubi's container. His parents probably neglected him to train him in the ways of the Biju's chakra. We Junin don't know much about what goes on in Naruto's household because his father is the Hokage. But from what Naruto has just told us, I can assume that it's not a very pleasant experience. Everyone should get to bed now. Tomorrow, Hayate's team is going to train while my team will be guarding and helping out on the bridge. Hayate's team and Kuranai's team nodded. In the forest, darn Natsumi, always making my life miserable. I will defeat you in an all-out match. After that Naruto ran at the trees punching and kicking them, until they fell over. Then he started using jutsu, lightning style, bolt striker. Then a single bolt of raw lightning appeared in Naruto's hand. He hurled through ten trees, making them topple over. Naruto then closed his eyes and said, Haku, you can come on out now. Haku emerged from the forest with a concerned frown on her face. Naruto, asked Haku, why are you mad? Is it because your sister gets all the attention and you get none? Naruto shook his head. Then what is it? I want to be treated like a human being by my family. They only want me back when I start to get strong. That's not how it's supposed to be. I want them to love me for who I really am, not what I am. Is that so wrong Haku? relied Naruto. Well Naruto, said Haku as she smiled, I think that's a good reason to be mad. If all you want is to be acknowledged as a person, then you should. Continue to try to get people to look at you like that. I hope that someday, other people will look at you that way. I'm going back to the house to get some sleep. Are you going to come with me? Nah, I'm going to continue my training. I have to work on my water manipulation. See you tomorrow Haku. Haku nodded and left to go back to Tazuna's house. Naruto closed his eyes and tried to imagine the water moisture in the air, condensing to create droplets of water. He opened his eyes to see enough water to fill a glass condense from the moisture in the air. Naruto smiled and continued his manipulation training. Next morning. Hey guys, said Choji as he approached the table to eat breakfast. He looked around and asked, where's Naruto? Did he even come back last night? Kuranai shook her head. No Choji, he didn't come home last night. We believe that he stayed out training all night. Haku will lead your team to where he was last night. Choji nodded. After breakfast, Team Hayate and Haku went to find Naruto while Team Kuranai went to help and watch over Tazuna as he built his bridge forest near where Naruto slept. Naruto yelled all of Team Hayate. They looked around in the surrounding forest both on the ground and in the trees. Haku was about to move on when she saw a leg dangling off of a tea branch. Hayate-san, I found him, yelled Haku when she saw Naruto sleeping in a tree. Hayate and his team came rushing to Haku. When they saw Naruto sleeping in a tree, Choji grew a very wide grin. He told everyone not to disturb Naruto and ran back to the house. He grabbed a bucket of ice-cold water, rushed back to Naruto, walked up the tree using tree climbing, and dumped the water on Naruto. Cold. Who the hell did that? yelled Naruto. When he saw Choji waving at him while standing on his tree branch, he lunged out at Choji, aiming to tackle him off the tree branch onto the ground. They rolled for a few minutes before Shikamaru stopped them. They just smiled while Hayate rubbed his forehead and sighed. Okay team, for the rest of the week when we're training, I will be working on your elemental manipulation. I have some chakra paper here. First, Nar, said Hayate before he was interrupted. Ah, uh, Hayate sensei, we already started on this. Hayate's eyes grew wide when he heard this. How many genin worked on elemental manipulation before their sensei brought it up? Well, with Naruto, nothing was ever normal. In fact, it was always abnormal. Okay, replied a surprised Hayate. What are your elements? I'm wind, answered Shikamaru. Earth, relied Choji. Wind, water, and lightning, replied Naruto with a grin. Again Hayate was surprised. Since when has there ever been a genin with three natural affinities. Well then, how far are you on your manipulation training then? Asked Hayate. I myself am working on slicing a waterfall with only the wind element, I've cut lightning in half, and I can create water from the moisture in the air. Choji can split a boulder in half by just placing his hand on it. Shikamaru can almost cut an entire waterfall. But, he can do multiple cuts on a leaf in a second. So how are we, sensei? Relied Naruto. Hayate's eyes just rolled back, before Hayate fainted. Later, Hayate was rudely woken up by Naruto throwing water on him. He blinked and saw his team staring at him. Okay, said Hayate as he got up, this is what we'll do. You are going to practice AC rank jutsu to the point where you don't need to use the seals. 
for the jutsu. Naruto I'll teach you in Shikamaru a wind jutsu and Choji a earth jutsu. Unless you already know a jutsu. All three of them nodded. Shikamaru and I know wind style, great breakthrough, answered Naruto. I know earth style, mud wall, relied Choji. Hayate nodded. Okay then, we'll get each of you started. To do a seal less jutsu, first you have to shape the jutsu in your mind, then think of how it would go if you were using seals, next use the jutsu. Naruto nodded, then closed his eyes and imagined using the jutsu. He then thought of how he molded the chakra when he used the hand seals. He then got ready to use the jutsu and then released it. Wind style. Great breakthrough, yelled Naruto. The wind jutsu was not nearly as effective as it was when he used the hand seals, but it still ripped up a few trees. Hayate nodded in approval. The rest of their training for that week went like that until they could use their jutsu without the hand seals five times in a row. End of the week. Bye Inari. Hope to see you again sometime, yelled Naruto as he, the other Konoha ninja, and Haku walked away. Inari just smiled and waved. Naruto had spoken to him and the rest of the villagers. After they had spoken to him, they had gotten their courage and determination back. To San, Tsunamai said, what are you going to name the bridge? I dub my bridge the Great Naruto Bridge, yelled Tazuna at the top of his lungs. On the bridge, Naruto smiled when he heard what the bridge was being called. When they got to the trees, they jumped into the trees to start their way back to the hidden leaf village. Village gates. Mon. This has got to be the most boring job in the whole village. Wake me up oh. Look, here comes Naruto, said Katetsu in a very bored voice. Azuma looked at where he was pointing and saw Naruto waving at him, when they got to the check-in office Katetsu saw a new person coming. Home with them. Hey, Naruto, who is that girl that you are bringing home with you? Asked Katetsu. Her name is Haku. Can you let her into the city until she gets clearance from my two san? Both Katetsu and Azuma nodded their consent. The Genin teams then continued on their way to the Hokage's office. However, when they got there, Naruto wished that he hadn't come to the office. Two san. Can you give my team an IAC ranked mission? We really deserve it. Sasuke and I know more jutsu than any other genin in the village. Kina has one of the most destructive taijutsu styles, asked a very whiny voice. No, Natsumi. Your team isn't ready to handle a C-ranked mission. Your sensei, Kakashi agrees with me on this. He says that although you can handle yourselves well in a fight, you guys just charge head on into all your enemies. On top of that, your teamwork isn't nearly as good as the other team that I sent on AC rank. In fact they're outside. Come in. Natsumi you can go. Naruto smirked when he saw his sister's face of outrage. As she left the room. Minato's eyes narrowed as his daughter left the room. Okay, said Minato after his daughter left the room, what happened on the mission? Well Hokage-sama, replied Hayate, first we encountered the demon brothers of the mist. It was there that we decided to test the genin. Naruto, Choji and Shikamaru performed admirably. Choji killed one of them with a smash of his fists. Naruto disarmed one of them, and then used a taijutsu and ninjutsu combo to gorge a hole in the other brother's chest. Then later on we faced Zabuza and his apprentice Haku, whom we brought with us. I faced Zabuza while Kurinai faced Haku. Meanwhile, the genin were guarding Tizuna. But soon, Haku got an advantage over Kurinai. Then, Naruto rushed out of formation to save her. You can ask Naruto what happened after this. But then, Zabuza captured me as well. Naruto. Then used a chakra attack on Zabuza, which broke Zabuza's sword. Gato and his men then showed up. Then we gave some kanai to Zabuza. Because he couldn't use his sword. He asked us to stay out of it. Then he rushed towards Gato, fighting through an army of bandits. When he got to Gato, he then murdered him by sticking a kanai in the bastard's heart and two in the throat. After that it was basically just protecting the bridge. Builder and training. Minato nodded at the explanation and dismissed everyone but Naruto and Haku. So, Naruto, can you explain to me what happened during your fight with Haku? And why did Haku come home with you? Naruto nodded. During my fight I merely threw smoke bombs to obscure her vision. Next, I knocked her out cold. Left her like that for the rest of the time. After Zabuza had defeated Gato, all the bandits ran away. Then I woke her up and told her what happened. After that, you already know about it. I want to ask you a favor to San. Can you make Haku part of our family? It would make me really happy, because she's like a true sister to me. Minato nodded. Okay, I'll just draw up the adoption papers. Take her home. Haku, be here tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock sharp. I'll be filling you in on your new rank. You'll be a Junin. Haku's eyes widened and Naruto smiled. He had gotten a big sister that cared for him. They walked home, but on their way home, they made a quick stop. 
Hey Tenten, said Naruto as he walked into the Higurashi Howling Wolf weapon store. Hey Naruto, who is your girlfriend? Her name is Haku and she's not my girlfriend. She's my new Nei Chan. Anyways, could you fix a weapon for her? Sure, what is it? Haku just smiled and passed the scroll to Naruto. He then channeled Chakra into the scroll, releasing the two pieces of Zabaza's sword. Tenten's eyes widened. Naruto, is this what I think it is? Is this the sword of the demon hidden in the mist? How did she get her hands on it? Well, Tenten, she was once the apprentice Zabuza. We fought on our last mission. I broke his sword. Zabuza died. Haku claimed the sword. We took it here to get it fixed. End of story, replied Naruto. Tenten nodded. Okay, I'll get to repairing this sword right away. But it won't be easy. This craftsmanship is perfect. Well, what are you still doing here? Get out of here. I have work to do. Naruto and Haku just smiled and walked out of the shop. But as they walked they heard Tenten mutter, lucky girl. I would die to get a sword like this. Hokage's manner. Soon Naruto was at his house. On his way there, he explained to Haku how bitchy Natsumi could be. Naruto. What are you doing bringing a girl home without telling me? Asked Kashina when she saw Naruto with Haku. Naruto just smiled replied. Ka-san, please meet the newest member of our family. I convinced Tu-san to adopt Haku here. So now she's the oldest sibling and now I have. A cool nei san to boast about. My sister is a junin. Kashina's eyes widened. Well, then Naruto, take her upstairs and find her a room. Naruto smiled and took her upstairs to get her a room. That night when Natsumi came. Home from team practice for dinner, she was surprised to see the girl from earlier. What the hell is she doing here? And why is Naruto eating with us? He never eats with us. Ever, Natsumi yelled. Well Natsumi, Haku has just been adopted into our family. So now her name is Uzumaki Namakaze Momochi Haku. Also she's our older sister. Since she is 16 years old. As to why I'm sitting with the family, it's to support my sister, replied Naruto while eating his dango and paki. 10. Minutes later, Naruto stood up to go to bed. Next morning Hokage's office, 10 o'clock. The assembled Junin were waiting for everyone to appear. With a yellow flash of light, Namikaze Minato appeared before the waiting assembled. Junin. Alright, I want to know if there's anyone from the rookies that you think are good enough to compete in the Chunin exams. I, Hataki Kakashi, nominate my team of Uzumaki Namikaze Natsumi, Uchiha Sasuke, and Inazuka Kiba for the Chunin exams. I, Yuhi Kuranai, nominate my team of Yamanka Ino, Hayuga Hanada, and Aburum Shino for the Chunin exams. I, Hayate Gekko, nominate my team of Uzumaki Namikaze Naruto, Narashikamaru, and Akamichi Choji for the Chunin exams. Meanwhile at the Rookie 9 Forest Clearing. Where the hell are our senseis? They should have been here at least an hour ago. And why did they have all of the rookie teams meet up in one place? Do you know why Sasuke? Asked Kiba. HMPH. I have no idea. We should be training right now instead of waiting for a late sensei, responded Sasuke with an arrogant scowl. Just shut up. Be patient. If you can't master this skill, then you'll never be true ninja, said Naruto in response to their bickering. Meanwhile at the Hokage's office. Hokage-sama, yelled Aruka, you can't possibly allow them to participate. They'll break underneath the pressure. I taught those students and I know what it is that they are capable. None of them are capable of facing the Chunin exams right now. I agree with Aruka on this one, said Guy. I myself held back my team for a year to make sure that they got the necessary amount of training to make sure that they had enough experience. You should hold them back for a year or two. I know what I'm doing Guy. Aruka, you may have taught those students at one point, but they are now my soldiers. You know not what we have done to improve their skills. According to Hayate, his students are more than capable of taking down a few of our current chunin. They are ready, replied Kakashi with enough determination to defeat the Hokage in combat. Aruka's eyes widened. He was about to make a retort when the Hokage interrupted. Enough. Aruka, the rookie teams will be competing in the chunin exams. That is final. Any other teams are free to join of their own free will. Dismissed. Meanwhile at the Rookie 9 forest clearing. The Rookie 9 was really getting frustrated. They were about to go do their own things when the senseis appeared. Hayate spoke. Everyone, you all will be competing in the biannual Chunin exams in three days. The reasons that we had you all gather here today is to ask. One thing of you. Whatever you do, do not engage the San Genin in combat. It's rumored that they are sending their crazed Jinchuriki. That is all. With that, the three sensei left the Genin to themselves. For the next three days, all the genin trained non-stop. Team Hayate worked on team formation and strategy. Team Kuranai worked on perfecting some of their genjutsu and ninjutsu. 
Team Kakashi worked on learning new jutsu. Morning of the Chunin exams, Ninja Academy. Alright guys, let's go wild, said Naruto. With that Naruto and his team walked into the academy, only to hear some shouting on the second floor. Academy second floor. As Naruto and his team walked into the academy, he heard yelling from the second floor. However, once he got to the second floor, he figured out. Why? Let us in please, pleaded a girl who looked like a panda with her two buns, we're here to take the chunin exams. Well, relied the guard, you don't look like you are ready for the exams. We took the exams last year and it was extremely hard. I don't think that. You are ready to take the exams. Hey jerks, release the genjutsu. This is the second floor not the third floor, came the arrogant voice of Natsumi and Sasuke. So you saw through the genjutsu that we placed on the sign, spoke the guard with narrowed eyes. Of course we did. After all I'm the heir to the Uzumaki and Namikaze clans while Sasuke is the last loyal Uchiha. Do you really think that I am as horrible as my pathetic brother? No dear sister, I didn't think that you were as bad as me. In fact, I thought that you were worse than me because I am older than you, spoke. Naruto from behind Natsumi, she whipped around to see her brother smirking at her, right then and there, which irked her to the point that if looks could kill she would have killed her brother, right then and there. Just shut up, big brother. I am better than you. I have had extra training with Tusan and Ka-san. You have no idea what you are dealing with. She replied with an arrogant air to her voice. If you say so little sister. Come on Choji, Shikamaru, we need to go to the examination room, he relied in a calm yet cold voice. Besides I want to. See Ino. Besides you need to catch up with Hanada, right Shikamaru, he said to Shikamaru as they walked towards the examination room. Meanwhile, the team that was complaining to the Chunin examiners was talking to Natsumi's team. Hey you, with the arrogant attitude, tell me your name. My name is Hayuga Neji. The one who looks like a panda is Tenten, spoke the white-eyed kid on the panda girl's team while said girl glared at him, and the one with the green jumpsuit is Rock Lee. Well, I am Natsumi. Uzumaki Namikaze Natsumi. The one with a duck's ass for hair is Sasuke. Uchiha Sasuke. Then the one with red markings. And dog-like features is Kiba. Inazuka Kiba. Get ready to feel the heat. We will own your asses, relied Natsumi with an arrogant smirk. Outside of Academy Room 301. As Naruto and his got to Erm. 301, they saw their sensei Gekko Hayate waiting for them at the door. Good. You all decided to come for the exams. If even one of you decided to chicken out, I would have had to tell all of you that you wouldn't be able to participate in the exams. You see, this whole exam is based on the teamwork of each team that participates in this exam. Good job for taking the risk and being able to entrust your life in the hands of your teammates. Go in there and kick some ass. I know that you will be able to conquer any challenge, especially with all the training that we've been doing over the last couple of months. You are all well prepared for the second exam. I hope that you all are able to beat the shit out of all the other teams in there. Remember those who don't follow rules are trash. But, those who don't help their teammates are even lower than trash. That is all I have to say to you. Good luck. Then with a quick body flicker jutsu. Hayate disappeared into a cloud of smoke. Well that was interesting, commented Naruto as he pushed open the doors to exam room 301. Well, well looky here. The whole gang is reunited, came a very familiar, yet annoying voice. Naruto turned around to see the team that he really did not want to talk to, Team 7. The Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, Natsumi. The last loyal Uchiha, Sasuke. The best tracker of the Inazuka in over 90 years, Kiba. Yeah it seems so Kiba. If you don't mind I need to go talk to someone. With that he and Shikamaru left to go find Ino and Hanada respectively. While he was searching for Ino someone came up behind him and whispered, looking for someone Naruto-kun. Perhaps I can help you. Naruto. Suddenly turned around to see Ino smiling at him very sweetly. Why hello Ino-chan. Yes you can help find someone. I am looking for a girl. She wears a very sexy, purple ninja attire. She has blue eyes that I could get lost in. She also is my girlfriend. Think you can help me? Naruto asked with a smile. Sure Naruto-kun. What is her name? Responded Ino with a dangerous glint to her eyes. I think you know her Ino-chan. Her name is Ino Yamanaka. Oh, replied Ino with a confused look. I didn't know that I was your girlfriend. When did this happen? She asked with a shocked look. It is happening now Ino-chan. Would you like to date me Ino-chan? Or do you want to date Natsumi? Naruto Yubaka. I am not like that. Do not ever question the fact that I am straight ever again. Yelled Ino with a fire burning in her eyes. However. When Natsumi heard the question, she started to glare at Naruto with the intent to kill him at the first chance. Sorry Ino-chan, I won't ask you that again. 
Geez, you rookies need to keep it down, came a voice from across from Naruto. Naruto looked up to see a silver-haired genin walking over to come have a talk with them. You need to realize that all the genin here are very tense. Don't make them mad no matter what. If you do, it could mean the death of you. The genin all looked around to see the rest of genin glaring at them. Oh, that doesn't look good does it? Air I don't think I caught your name, stated Naruto when he saw the rest of the genin in the room. Oh I'm Kabuto, genin with any information you need. So any information that you want? Yeah Kabuto-san, I want info on Uzumaki Namakaze Naruto and Gara of the San, answered Sasuke of the arrogant clan. Oh you know their names already? That's no fun. Well here they are. Naruto has chakra levels on par with most high level genin. Known jutsus, are clone just su, substitution and transformation. His genjutsu is almost non-existent. His taijutsu is on par with most low level junins. He uses a taijutsu style known as the electric dragon striker. It is also said that he created this style by combining the death dragon striker style of his mother and electric wind striker style of his father. In his last mission it was shown that he was proficient with a sword. He was able to match Zabuza, demon of the hidden mist, in a pure kenjutsu match and cut right through it. Gara has chakra levels on par with mid-level Junin. There are no known jutsus for her. Her genjutsu is almost non-existent. She only uses the academy taijutsu style. Other than that there is no information on her. As soon as he finished everyone started staring at Naruto. What, is there something on my face? I swore I got that bug off my face this morning. No, it's not that Naruto. It's only the fact that you were able to take on the demon of the mist like it was nothing. Shouted Natsumi, who was. Mad because her brother was able to do something that she herself couldn't accomplish. Well, Kabuto-san, could you tell us about the team with a musical note on their headbands? Asked Hanada in a timid voice. Of course. It's said that they are a newly formed village, so they don't have much strength. This statement however, made the sound ninja, to get. Very mad. They responded to this statement with an attack. The mummy-looking ninja, ran towards Kabuto and attacked with his gauntlet arms. Gah! Screamed Kabuto as the sound attack hit him. He was about to retaliate when a cloud of smoke appeared. Everyone, sit down and shut up. My name is Morino Ibiki. I am the proctor for the first exam. The first exam is the terror of the CHUUNIN exams. The first exam is a paper test. There will be nine questions on the paper test and then one final question. Later, you start with 27 points. For each question you miss, your team will lose one point. Also, if you get caught cheating five times, you get kicked out of the exam. You have one hour. Now begin your tests. With that, everyone started writing furiously on their tests. Shikamaru finished his test within 10 minutes. In the next 20 minutes, he used his shadow possession jutsu to copy down the answers onto their answer. Sheets. Hash 31, number 8, number 25, number 42, and number 61 take your team out. You fail, called one of the examiners. After this, Ino used her mind switch jutsu to take a look at Shikamaru's answer sheet. After this she copied the answers to her own paper test. She then transferred her mind to her teammate's mind to copy. Her answers onto her teammate's answer sheets. Time's up. Put down your pencils, shouted Ibiki, time for the 10th question. But before I tell you the 10th question, there are some stipulations. First, if you chose to take the exam and fail, you can never take the Chunin exams ever again. So who wants to give up? Speak up now. All of a sudden almost half of the rest of the examinees got up and quit. Five minutes had passed and only the rookie nine, guys team, the sound team, three. Other leaf ninja teams, one sand ninja team, one grass and one rock ninja team remain. Okay, started Ibiki, since no one else is going to be leaving, I guess I can start the tenth question. After a few moments of silence he shouted. You all, pass. What, how come we passed? Asked a nameless sand kunoichi. You passed because you all took the risk. You see, on missions you may have to choose between completing the mission and saving your Comrades, what you choose could mean the destruction of your village or the death of your teammates. This is why you pass. Now if we why, Ibiki. Replied before being interrupted. Crash. The windows broke as an unknown object flew into the room. Then the object unwrapped itself, while simultaneously throwing kanai at. The ceiling, pinning a banner to the ceiling. The banner read, Anko Miritashi, the sexy single proctor of the second exam. Meanwhile a figure stood. Up obscured by a smoke bomb that was thrown along with the kanai. When the smoke cleared Miritashi Anko, the snake mistress, stood there, glaring at the ninja. You're early, again Anko, commented Ibiki from behind the banner. Really? What's this Ibiki? You let 33 ninja survive? 
You getting soft in your old age? Just get the hell out of here Anko. I have stuff to do. Alright, alright. Okay Squirts, I'm the proctor of the second exam. Meet me at area 44 in 10 minutes. If you're not there, you're disqualified. Time, location skip. Area 44. Okay kitties welcome to the forest of death. Your mission is to successfully travel through the forest. Your team will be given one scroll. There are. Two scrolls. There is the earth and heaven scroll. Your mission will be to retrieve the other scroll and make it to the tower in the middle of the forest. Within the 5 day time limit. In addition, you can't open the scrolls. Think of this as a test of trust. We also need you to sign these release forms. That way the leaf can't be held responsible if any of you happen to die. Does that mean we can kill in this test? Came a question from the crowd. Yes, though it's not advised to do so. If that's all, I'll be seeing you at the tower in the middle of the forest. With that, the Chunin guards gave. Each of the Genin teams a release form to sign. Naruto and his team headed to gate number 7 after handing in all of his team's release forms and receiving a heaven scroll. Alright guys, Naruto said in a very serious tone, we need a secret password. It'll be Bum, Chomper, and Dragon. Both Shikamaru and Choji nodded their assent. When the Chunins opened the gate, they sped through the forest, searching for weak chakra signatures to grab scrolls from. They found a team of weak team of Leaf Genin. They merely leaked some killer intent, which was able to knock them out cold. They found an earth scroll in their belongings and took off. However, not long afterwards, they heard a scream that sounded familiarly like Natsumi. Naruto told Choji and Shikamaru that he would take care of it. With that he took off in the direction of Natsumi's scream. Location change. Natsumi team. Not long after Natsumi and her team had entered the forest, they had been ambushed by a grass ninja. They were able to hold him off for a while. Until he started to show his true power. But by that time it was too late. When Natsumi found out who he really was, the man started to release. Killer intent. He was Orochimaru of the Sanin. The amount of killer intent that he was emitting, caused Natsumi to freeze up and scream like a baby. However, Kiba saved her by stabbing her with a kunai, releasing the hold the killer intent had on her. She was then forced to fight. Orochimaru with Sasuke and Kiba backing her up. She fought him with her whirlpool swords while Orochimaru used his grass cutter sword. But, even with her extra training, she couldn't hope to take on Orochimaru and win, although it was just Kenjutsu that was being used. Gur, I can't take on Orochimaru. If I can't beat him, how can I beat Tusan? Plus, even with Sasuke, Kiba and me fighting together, we can't even injure him a little, were the thoughts racing through Natsumi's mind as she fell to the ground. Orochimaru was about to behead her with his grass. Cut her sword when another metal blade appeared above Natsumi's head. She looked up to see her own brother, the brother she abused, beat up and neglected, save her. Orochimaru's smirk faltered when he saw someone standing in the way of Natsumi. Who are you? I demand to know, shouted Orochimaru when he saw that he wouldn't be able to kill Natsumi. Do you wish to know who I am? You don't deserve it, but I'll tell you anyway. I am the forgotten son of the Hokage. I am Uzumke Namakaze Naruto. Nice to meet ya. Let's go wild, replied Naruto as he shifted his sword into attack position. He leapt forward while slashing his sword upwards, which caught Orochimaru off guard. This allowed Naruto to get a grievous injury on Orochimaru before he could do anything. With blood coming out of his stomach at a fast rate, Orochimaru channeled all his chakra into his teeth and neck. His neck extended at a fast rate, and his teeth bit into Sasuke's neck leaving a cursed seal of heavens. Naruto whipped around kicked Orochimaru in the stomach making him run, while Naruto ran towards Natsumi, Kiba and Sasuke. He picked up Sasuke and Natsumi and jumped through the trees towards his own team. Kiba followed suit. Location skip. With Shikamaru and Choji. Hey bum? Hmm. What is it Choji? Don't ask Choji. He's on his way back. He's got team Kakashi with him. He'll be here soon. I'll be watching clouds if you need me, responded Shikamaru. He was about to lie down, but Naruto appeared out of the trees with an injured team Kakashi. Choji, get Kiba and Natsumi some food. Also, Shikamaru, heal them with you medical ninjutsu, ordered Naruto as he landed on the ground. What are you going to do? Asked Choji. I need to seal off as much of the seal on Sasuke's shoulder as I can. Remember that I am this generation's seal master. Not even Natsumi can. Hold a candle to me in Fuinjutsu. I will be able to do it. Everyone get to work. Choji, if they complain, knock them out cold. I don't want any problems. Understood. Come on Shika. We have a job to do. With that they got to work. Choji unsealed some of the food from their scrolls and gave it to Kiba and Natsumi. Shikamaru got to work on the injuries of Natsumi by using his medical ninjutsu. 
Meanwhile Naruto drew some seals on Sasuke. Uzumaki sealing, partial seal. With that, he slammed his hand onto Sasuke's shoulder. A bunch of Japanese figures appeared. With that, Sasuke's eyes opened. Wa, where are we? Asked Sasuke with fear in his eyes. You are in my team's camp. You and your team were injured. I saved your team from Orochimaru. You should be thanking me. Now lay down. You are injured and not well. You shouldn't be up. Your teammates are being cared for. With that, Naruto knocked Sasuke out and started to heal him. Stupid boy. He should have listened to me, muttered Naruto as he saw the damage Sasuke had caused himself from standing up. He got up to go. Help Choji and Shikamaru when he saw Natsumi standing there looking at him. He just looked at her with a raised eyebrow. Why? Asked Natsumi. Why did you save us? Why did you save me? Answer me. Well I saved you because unlike you, I am not willing to let you die just because I don't like you. Even though you are my enemy, you still are. Family and a fellow leaf ninja. I would rather die than let one of my comrades die. Even you should know this. But why must you know? Answered. Naruto. I've realized how much of a bitch I've been. I don't deserve to call you family. No one does. Not even Tu San and Ka San. We have all been. Cruel. In addition, we've neglected you to a point of no return. I hope that you can forgive us. Sigh. Well this was going to happen soon anyways. I can't forgive you yet. I can't even call you family or someone I like. I can only call you a comrade. I hope, however, that someday in the near future, but right now that isn't the case. But only you can decide that. Good night little sister. With that, Naruto punctured her stomach making her fall asleep. Choji, how is Kiba? Asked Naruto after he laid Natsumi down. He holding up well, but he could be better. It seems Orochimaru used a five elemental seal on him that locked his chakra. He needs his chakra to survive. Could you unlock it for us? Naruto nodded, walked up to Kiba, and pressed his five fingers against the seal and shouted, five elemental seal, Kai. As soon as he said that, the seal on Kiba's stomach started to glow and the seal disappeared. Choji, Shikamaru we need to talk, Naruto signed discreetly. They nodded, so what do you need Naruto? Asked Choji. We need to leave now. I know that we shouldn't abandon them while they're defenseless, which is why I set up a barrier that will keep animals and enemy ninja away until they wake up. I know that I being cruel, but I'm only doing this because I don't want to be in this forest any longer. Orochimaru of the Sanin was the one who gave them their injuries. We need to make a beeline out of here right now. Let's go. With that, Naruto and his team packed up and started their trek towards the tower in the center of the forest. But as they walked through the forest, they saw a San. Genin with a crazy look on her face while facing the Rain Genin team. They decided to investigate, with the San Genin. Hey kid, yelled a Rain Genin, get out of here before you get killed. I can't promise you won't get hurt. Just give me the scroll and you'll get out of here free. However, the San Genin didn't agree. I will kill you. Bring it, yelled the crazed female. I am Gara, and with a flick of her hair, yelled, and I will justify my existence. The Rain Genin got tired of this and threw the umbrellas that were on his back up, opening them up and spinning them like a top at the same time. He then formed the Ram seal and suddenly, Senbon needles started flying out of the spinning umbrellas. A cloud of smoke formed around where Gara was hit. The Rain Genin thought that he had her when he heard laughter coming from the smoke. When the smoke disappeared, Gara stood there unharmed. The Rain Genin looked at the San Genin's team for explanation. The one with makeup on his face replied, It's actually really simple. Gara can't be hurt whatsoever. A will of sand immediately erects itself around Gara when it feels Gara getting threatened. We don't know if it's Gara's doing or if the sand has a free will, but Gara has never been hurt. Even when we did some rank missions, Gara never got a scratch. Meanwhile, the other sand Kunoichi was waving at them. Bye bye, she said. The Rain Genin team looked up in time to see a wave of sand rush out of the redhead's gourd on her back at them. They looked at Gara to see her pick up one of their umbrellas and open it. She then stretched out her hand and shouted crazily, Sand Burial. Suddenly sand rushed towards the Rain Genin in waves. The waves of sand surrounded the Genin. Ah! Came the screams of the Rain Genin as the sand surrounded them. But they were soon silenced, for their blood came spurting out. Of the sand. The red-haired Kunoichi was smiling crazily, but her male teammate came up to speak to her. Gara, you didn't need to kill them. We already had our scrolls. We could have just escaped, yelled the one with makeup on his face. Funny, replied Gara. I never thought of that. I must kill them to prove my existence. God damn it Gara! yelled the makeup boy, listen to me. I'm your big brother. Really, said an amused Gara. I've thought of you, Konkuru, as a brother or Tamari a sister. With that she stretched out her hand. Her. 
Teammates jumped back in fear, but the sand just collected to form a stopper. She then walked away not hearing her brother Konkuru mutter. Crazy bitch. Aruka sensei, shouted Naruto as he leapt towards his fatherly figure, we did it. We passed the second exam. Choji and Shikamaru watched as. Their friend conversed with his fatherly figure. Well team Hayate, spoke Aruka, addressing all of them, you all pass the second exam. Since it's only the second day, you have three days to. Rest up and do whatever you want. The only thing you can't do is leave this tower. Naruto, come see me about lightning manipulation after this. We'll work on it after the next thing that comes up in the exam. Yane. A puff of smoke engulfed Aruka, leaving nothing, but an empty space. Well, spoke Naruto breaking the tension that was in the air, that was very interesting. Well, we should go rest up, then eat, and then continue. Working on integrating our elements into our fighting style. I myself am working on a lighting style fighting technique. I'm going to go find a room. Later. With that, Naruto walked away instead of using a body flicker jutsu. One day later, Naruto was in the training room working on perfecting his. Lighting fighting style. Lighting style. Striking fist, yelled Naruto as he ran at the targets. He ran past them, while attempting to slash at them. He succeeded. Because the targets split in half, without Naruto having to touch the targets at all. He smiled and body flickered to the food court to get some food. When he got there, he saw Team Kakashi. However, when they saw him they were infinitely mad. Naruto, snarled Kiba, what the hell were you thinking? Why the hell did you leave us all alone in the forest? Some animals or ninja teams could've came, snatched our scroll, and been off with it and we wouldn't be any wiser. Well, I think that you should calm down. I knew about all those things when I left you. Which is why I took the necessary precautions. You were well. Protected by the Ba, replied Naruto before he was rudely interrupted by Sasuke. What protection? I saw nothing with my Sharigan. Well, that's because the protection disappeared the moment you woke up. That way, you wouldn't have to spend a long time trying to dispel my barrier. This, however, just made them even matter. What? Are you saying that we aren't good enough to lower a fucking barrier? Asked Natsumi. Yes. Although you have had training with two San, my barriers are much more advanced. I am this generation seal master. I know that you won't be able to get through the barrier because it's of my own design. Only my teammates know the workings of my barrier. It was nice chatting, but I need to get some food. As if in perfect synchronization, Naruto's stomach growled very loudly. Naruto just smiled sheepishly and ran to get some ramen, dango and sushi. He saw Choji eating by himself and went to sit with him. Munch. Yeah this is good. Oh, hey Naruto, said Choji as he saw Naruto approaching his table, wanna sit down? I have plenty of room. Shikamaru said he'd be up in a little bit. That's very cool Choji, replied Naruto. How has your earth fighting style going? I think I got my lighting style down. Choji looked at him with wide eyes at this news. Why you got your style down? That's awesome. I wish that you could help me with earth style, but earth and lightning aren't anything alike. After all, lightning is much more superior to earth. Oh look there's bum. I hope that he's gotten his style down, relied Choji as they saw Shikamaru sit down with some food. I hope that you all got your styles down, said Shikamaru as he sat down, cuz I sure did. The wind elemental taijutsu style has been finalized. All the way down to the practice keita. I even created a scroll on it already. As soon as he said this he looked at Naruto and Choji, who both had a gaping mouth and wide eyes. What? He asked. You have a scroll already. You ain't Shikamaru if you created a scroll without being asked, said Naruto. Hey, replied an indignant Shikamaru, I can work hard when I want. I ain't just a lazy bum. With that, Shikamaru, Choji and Naruto started eating. Their food. Time skip. Fifth day of the second exam. Alright everyone, the preliminary rounds of the Chunin exams are about to beggy. Sorry Hokage-sama, but would it be alright if I conducted the intro? Asked a bearded man with a cigarette. Of course, go ahead. Right. My name is Seru Tobi Asuma. I am the proctor for the preliminary matches of the Chunin exam. This will no longer be a team effort. It will all be based on individual skills. It will be a one-on-one. -on -one. I will referee. I reserve the right to call the match at any time. If you don't listen, then you will be disqualified. But before we begin, is there anyone that would wish to quit right now? Kabuto raised his hand. Asuma looked at him strangely. Then said that he was free to go. All right. Now that has been taken care of, direct your attention to the electronic board. Your names will be displayed on the electronic board. The first match will be Uzumaki Namakaze Natsumi vs Nirak Matsumoto. Natsumi looked around for her opponent. When she saw who her opponent was, she was surprised. He had a pale face. His eyes were the color red. 
He was very thin, but she could tell that he was very muscular. He had a height of 6 feet 1 inch. But the scariest part was the scar going across his face. It started on the top left side of his face. It went down to his forehead, but then it deviated to go straight through his eye, and then ended underneath his right ear. Natsumi got ready for the fight to begin. The match between Natsumi of the Leaf and Matsumoto of the Grass begins now, yelled Asuma. Then he jumped backwards to let the fighters attack each other. Natsumi initiated with some taijutsu. She used the electric wind striker taijutsu that was used by the Hokage. Natsumi ducked underneath one of Matsumoto's punches. She then threw a devastating wind enhanced punch right into his stomach. He spat up blood as he was sent flying backwards back into the wall, creating a huge human shaped crater. Then, Natsumi used a trapping jutsu to make sure that he could not escape. Ninja art. Uzumaki trap, yelled Natsumi. Suddenly, five beams of light shimmered into existence around Natsumi. She just pointed her hand at Matsumoto, who was trying to get out of the crater that he was stuck in. The beams raced through the air onto his arms, legs, and his neck. Effectively trapping him so that he couldn't escape. Natsumi smiled and looked at the proctor. Winner of this fight is Natsumi of the Leaf. Natsumi walked up the stairs and was congratulated by her teammates and sensei. The screen started, shuffling through the names again. It read Uchiha Sasuke vs. Akuta Yaro of the Leaf. Both Sasuke and Yaro walked down to the arena. Again. Asuma started the match by saying their names, Sasuke of the Leaf vs. Yaro of the Leaf, begin. Sasuke ran at Yaro using the Uchiha clan. Interceptor Taijutsu style. Yaro however, just used the basic academy Taijutsu style. There were many broken bones. It seemed that they were pretty. Even until Sasuke decided to use a jutsu. Fire style. Fireball jutsu. Sasuke then started breathing fire at his opponent. After Sasuke decided to stop the flow of chakra, Yaro jumped. Through the flames at Sasuke. His hand was glowing with chakra when he grabbed onto Sasuke. Sasuke tried to dodge, but he was unsuccessful. In dodging him, Yaro grabbed onto Sasuke's arm. Suddenly there was a transfer of chakra. Yaro was taking Sasuke's chakra. Sasuke narrowed his eyes and jumped away. It's time to end this. He started off with the leaf shadow dance. This move greatly surprised both Lee and Guy. The two proud green beasts narrowed their eyes in anger because they had one of their techniques used by a copycat. A goddamn copycat. Everyone should have to work for their techniques, but Sasuke and Kakashi didn't have to do much work. Just look at the technique with their damn Sharigan. And you have a whole new technique down. But Sasuke didn't finish it like a normal leaf shadow dance. After he was behind Yaro in the air, he kicked him in the sides making him spin while falling to the ground. But right before they landed on the ground, Sasuke smashed one solid kick into Yaro's stomach, making him hit the ground in a very uncomfortable posture. Congratulations Yaro, said Sasuke, you were the first to experience my lion combo. I hope that it was good enough. But from the looks of it, I believe that it was a success. Later, Asuma called the match soon afterwards. The name started rolling again. Konkuro of the Sand vs Arkami. Arto of the Leaf. Konkuro strode down to where Arto was waiting. Arto of the Leaf vs Konkuro of the Sand, begin. Arto rushed at Konkuro while weaving hand seals. Ninja Arts. No Bones Jutsu. He then wrapped his body around Konkuro, while throwing the unknown object to the ground. His legs and arms. Circled around Konkuro's arms and legs respectively. His neck also wrapped around Konkuro's neck. He smiled. You could have never hoped to beat me. My jutsu allows me control over my limbs, while at the same time, my body is so flexible that I could bend. Backwards straight and not feel a thing. Because of this you can't beat me. Get ready to fell a lifetime of hurt. He then grabbed a kanai out of his. Kanai pouch. Without any further thought, Arto stabbed it into Konkuro's eyes. He was expecting a scream out of Konkuro, and was surprised when. Konkuro started to laugh. Konkuro's head turned around. But his face was no longer human. It looked like that of a puppet. Wa well, what the hell is going on? Where are you? He was about to get off when the puppet grabbed him. The package that he had thrown started. To unwrap. It stated to unwrap itself until Konkuro could be seen in plain sight. He grinned. Then he unveiled the chakra strings that connected his. Fingers to his puppet. Then the puppet started to strangle him until he died with a crack. He just walked away as the proctor declared him the. Winner. Next match is Inazuka Kiba vs Uzumaki Namakaze Naruto. The two fighters calmly walked down the stairs and got into their personal fighting. Stance. Kiba was using a modified version of the Inazuka clan taijutsu style. Meanwhile Akamaru was getting ready to fight. Naruto was using a. Combination of both his parents taijutsu style. 
As soon as they heard begin, Naruto charged straight at Kiba. He jumped over Kiba's punch while delivering an uppercut kick to Kiba's chin. Kiba was sent flying into the air. Kiba got up and was ready to fight in moments. Unfortunately for Kiba, this also meant that he got punched in the stomach as soon as he got up. He was sent flying towards the wall. But instead of hitting the wall and creating a crater, Kiba landed on the wall with his feet. Then he used the momentum to propel himself forward at Naruto while using a jutsu. Man beat clone, fang over fang, yelled Kiba. Akamaru, then changed into an exact replica of Kiba. Except for one thing, he looked a lot more feral than the real Kiba did. Next, both of them started their fang over fang jutsu. They shot forwards at dangerous speeds while spinning in a tornado drill-like fashion. Naruto just smirked when he saw that he was cornered. He jumped into the air, right over Kiba and Akamaru as they sped. Right past him, Kiba landed on all fours as he came out of his jutsu. He growled and turned around in time to feel a fist hit him in the gut. He bent forwards as he coughed up blood. Then, with his other hand, Naruto performed an uppercut punch to Kiba's face. Kiba flew backwards into the wall. He growled and ran towards Naruto at top speeds while yelling, Come on Akamaru. HT then threw a smoke bomb to obscure Naruto's vision. Unfortunately for him, Naruto was able to smell him. Naruto just smiled and drew two kanai and charged at Kiba. Left downward slash, upper right, diagonal slash. Then, Naruto threw his kanai into the sleeves of Kiba's jacket. Up in the stands, everyone was mystified as to what was happening. In the fight between Naruto and Kiba, but soon enough the smoke had cleared. Kiba was pinned against the wall, while Naruto started to say an incantation. Kakashi was floored. How in the world did Naruto beat Kiba? Kiba's taijutsu was the best of all the genin. Hado no yan, biakurai. Suddenly an arc of white light extended from Naruto's extended fingertips. Everyone expected the beam to stop at Kiba's skin. But, it went through Kiba's arm, creating a pool of blood. But the lighting bounced off the wall and hit the kanai, knocking it off the wall. Ah, god damn you Naruto. I will murder you if it's the last thing I do. There's no way that a dope like you could defeat me. So easily. Get ready to be defeated, yelled Kiba. He ripped the other kanai out of his jacket. He then charged towards Naruto with the intent to kill. Naruto merely smiled. Come get me if you can, mutt. You aren't ready to face me. With that, Naruto disappeared into thin air. When he reappeared behind Kiba, he had his sword drawn. Then, blood started to spurt out of Kiba as a cut appeared. It stretched from his bottom left hip to his top right shoulder. Kiba merely dropped unconscious from the loss of blood. And that, whispered Naruto, mud is why you don't mess with those who are stronger than you. If you couldn't take on Orochimaru, but I could, what made you think that you had the ability to defeat me? Foolish boy. Asuma nodded at Naruto, who just walked R back up the stairs to his waiting team. He sweat dropped when he saw the rest of the genin minus his own team staring intently at him. What? I didn't do anything wrong, did I? Asked Naruto. Kakashi decided to elaborate for him. Naruto, how the hell are you so strong? Even if Hayate trained you night and day, there's no way that you could have progressed that much in such a short amount of time. So the question on everybody's mind is, how the hell did you get so strong so fast? Ah, well, I won't tell you how strong I really am. But I will show you a tip of the iceberg at the Chunin exams tournament. You can ask my friends. And sensei, but no one knows my true capabilities. I've never had a reason to show it. There is only one person right now that would get to see it in. Battle. That person is Natsumi, the bane of my childhood. If I fight her during the Chunin exams, I will show part of my true potential. No one. Else, relied Naruto. Kakashi nodded begrudgingly. He got an answer, but it wasn't the answer that he wanted. Everyone looked down to see what the next match would be. The electronic board displayed the names Nara Shikamaru vs Kinata Kin. Let the match between Nara Shikamaru of the Leaf and Kinata Kin of the Sound begin. Shikamaru and Kinta jumped backwards so that they could examine each other. Then, Kin started throwing multiple Senban Shikamaru he just dodged them. But, whenever he dodged them, he always received a cut on his cheek, as if she was channeling wind chakra into the Senban. But, there wasn't even any chakra coating the Senban. He then heard a bell-like sound coming from behind him. He saw that instead of two Senban, there were four. But how was that possible? He had only seen Kin throw two Senban at him. Unless, there were hidden Senban when the other two Senban were thrown. There also was a string attached to the Senban. That must be the key. Shikamaru looked at the Senban and back to his opponent and smiled. He could use his chakra to make sure that when he used his possession jutsu, it would be thin enough to look like it was the 
Shadow o the strings attached Senban. All he needed to do was keep her talking long enough and make sure that she didn't notice his jutsu. So, said Shikamaru, how are you able to throw four Senban when there are obviously only two in you hands? So you caught onto that did you? Asked the smirking kin. Shikamaru nodded while he used his jutsu. He was at the point where he could use the jutsu without using any seals. Well, replied Kin, that is a trade secret. But you should know that I was letting you know that there was two more. Senban. If I weren't trying to let you know that there was two more Senban, then I wouldn't have attached the bells to the Senban. So you should. Just give up. She smirked and went to reach for two more Senban, but found that she could move her arms at all. What the hell did you do to me? Why can't I move my arms? Here, answered Shikamaru, I'll let you see what your mistake. He made her look down to see the shadow of the string attached to her Senban. You see, the shadow of your string shouldn't be seen at all. In fact, there wouldn't be any shadow with how high up it is. Kin's eyes widened as she realized her mistake. Shikamaru then drew some shuriken and kanai. Let's see who can dodge these weapons, shall we? Shikamaru then threw all the weapons, while at the same time, Kin also drew some kanai and shuriken, and then threw all of them. Both Shikamaru and Kin leaned backwards to dodge the projectiles. However, Kin hit the back wall and was pushed upwards where all the projectiles hit her in the head, knocking her unconscious. Shikamaru sighed and muttered something about troublesome sound ninja before releasing the jutsu on Kin. As he walked back upstairs, the electronic board started rolling. It read Tamari of the Sand vs Tenton of the Leaf. Both competitors walked down to the arena. Finally Asuma spoke. Let the match between Tamari of the Sand vs Tenton of the Leaf begin. Tamari opened up her fan and swung it, throwing multitudes of wind waves at Tenton. Tenton jumped out of the way and started to throw many weapons at Tamari. But none of the weapons hit. Tamari because she would always use the wind to blow her weapons away, making her attacks useless. Tenton contemplated her decisions, either fight to the very end and almost certainly lose, or give up now. She smiled and raised her hand. Proctor, I give up. There's no possible way that I could win. I would only embarrass myself and get severely injured. Asuma nodded and declared. Tamari the winner. The names once again started rolling. Dosu Kinta of the Sound vs Gara of the Sand. Both the mummy man and the sadistic sand chick descended to the arena. Let the match between Dosu of the Sound and Gara of the Sand begin. Sand exploded from the gourd on Gara's back. She weaved her hands in complicated patterns so that she could manipulate the sand in different ways. The sand raced towards Dosu to trap him. Dosu jumped backwards out of the way while at the same time activating his sound gauntlet. Sound style. Sound waves, shouted Dosu. After that, the sound waves caused the sand following Dosu to stop following him and collapse to the ground. Gara narrowed her eyes and started manipulating the sand again, but this time, it started crashing down onto Dosu like the ocean. Dosu tried again and again to stop the sand with his sound gauntlet, but he was unable to do so. However once he was trapped in the sand coffin, Gara used her most deadly jutsu, sand tsunami burial. The sand around Dosu started to contract around him, crushing him into oblivion. On the outside of the coffin, blood splashed all over, signifying the death of Dosu. Well, said a shocked Asuma, Gara of the Sand wins by the fact that Dosu of the Sound has just suffered a most painful death. Gara merely smiled and walked back up the stairs to the stands while twirling her hair. The electronic board again started running. Hayuga Hanada vs Hayuga, Neji. Both Genin walked down, albeit Hanada walked a little more quickly than her cousin, Neji. Let the match between Neji of the Leaf and Hanada of the Leaf begin. Both fighters dropped into the standard gentle fist stance. They then ran at each other, trying to close each other's tenketsu points on each other. Up in the stands, Kuranai Sensei said Shino, what kind of taijutsu style is that? That, Shino is the gentle fist style. Unlike Lee and I, who use the iron fist style which deals damage to the body, the Hayuga style damages the inner body. The Hayuga use their Bayakugan to see the Tenketsu points on the body. Then they gather chakra in the hands and hit the Tenketsu points, which can either open or close the Tenketsu point. Unlike when protecting yourself against the Iron Fist style, you can't train your body to resist the style, replied Guy. This got Guy many open mouths. How could any style be that powerful? Back in the battle, Hanada, please don't make me hurt you. We both know that I'm stronger than you. Neji Ni San, please don't try to stop me from fighting. I will fight you to prove to the Hayuga clan that I am not useless. I will use a new style that no one has ever seen. Almost all Hayuga have an earth elemental affinity. I, however, am water. This means that I can't muscle my through the hits. 
that other people deliver to me. Prepare to meet the water-style gentle fist, yelled Hanada. She stretched her hands forward and spread it out. Water-style. Eight trigrams, 64 protective palms, shouted Hanada. She charged Neji while creating a laser-like beams from her fingertips. Neji responded by using his defensive jutsu. Heavenly rotation, yelled Neji while spinning like a top and expelling chakra. Hanada just kept slashing away at the spinning chakra top. This went on for five minutes until Neji supposedly ran out of chakra. Hanada stopped after she got in three hits on him until he surprised her. You're in the range of my divination. Eight trigrams, 64 palms, said Neji. Then he went on to the offensive. Two palms, four palms, 16 palms, 32 palms, 64 palms. After that, Hanada flew backwards while spinning in a circle towards the wall. Neji walked up to Hanada and said, you did well Hanada. You've proved to me that you can be very strong. You only lost because you allowed yourself to get overconfident. You did an incredible job, Hanada. You'll make a great kunoichi. He nodded to the proctor. Winner of this match is Hayuga Neji. The medics walked up to Hanada and put her onto a stretcher to take head to the hospital. The electronic board started rolling again. After it stopped rolling, it read. Aburum Shino vs Kinta Zaku. Both fighters walked down to the arena. Asuma started the match. Let the match between Shino of the Leaf vs Zaku of the sound begin. Zaku started throwing jutsu after jutsu at Shino. Sound decapitation waves, yelled Zaku. Zaku smirked when he saw that Shino wasn't getting out of the way. But his confidence proved to be misplaced when the Shino that he was about to kill dispersed into a cloud of bugs. He looked around to find Shino right behind him. You shouldn't have underestimated my abilities. Look around you. My bugs have surrounded you and will latch onto you and suck your chakra dry. Show me what you can do to stop it. Fine, sound decapitation waves. However, the jutsu wasn't working. This is because there were bugs in the holes that the jutsu came out of. Were being blocked by Shino's bugs. Due to this fact, the chakra in his arms started bouncing back and forth causing his arms to explode and get ripped off from their joints. Ah, screamed Zaku, what the hell was that for? You didn't have to rip off my arms to win the bloody match. Arg, I submit, the winner of this match by forfeit is Kinta Zaku. The electronic board started rolling through the names again. The board showed the names. Yamanka Ino of the Leaf vs Akado Karashi of the Grass. Let the match between Ino of the Leaf and Karashi of the Grass begin. Both fighters jumped backwards to analyze their opponents. Ino, being a mindwalker was able to identify whether her enemy could use elemental jutsu and what kind of element jutsu they are using. Karashi looked at Ino, and was able to determine that she would probably be good at using a more flexible taijutsu style as well as maybe using some water jutsu. Ino, initiated the fight, water style, rapid torrent, yelled Ino as she shot multiple bullets of water, which in turn became rotating saws of doom. Karashi, however, was, able to avoid getting hit by the blasts of water by using another jutsu. Earth style, earth wall, said a calm Karashi. A tall wall that extended from wall to wall rose up in front of the blast of water that Ino shot. However, Ino's jutsu surprised Karahi so much, that he was frozen in shock. Fire style. Leaf sacred technique. 1000 years of death, Ino appeared right behind Karashi, and stuck her fingers up Karashi's ass. Karashi was shocked when Ino suddenly appeared behind him, but when Ino stuck her fingers up his ass, he felt very satisfied. However, the feeling disappeared when he landed on his face. What the hell? What kind of fire jutsu was that? You didn't gather any chakra for that attack. What the hell did you just do? Ino smiled and replied, in a very sing-song voice, that of course wasn't a jutsu. It was just a poke up your ass. I used it to surprise you for this next jutsu. Water style. Swirling fist. Her fists and legs were surrounded in water that was swirling at the speed of a whirlpool. They then engaged in a taijutsu match. With Ino gaining the upper hand due to the fact that most of her hits were enhanced by the water element. Then when she had broken Karashi's guard, she went in for the killing strike. Water style. Decapitating whirlpool strike, yelled Ino as she drove her hand right into her opponent's face. She sent him flying into the stands. Winner of this match by knockout, Yamanka Ino of the Leaf. With that the electronic board started spinning again for the next and final round of the preliminaries. The board read Akamichi Choji of the Leaf vs Rock Lee of the Leaf. However, before Choji could go down to the stadium, Naruto stopped to talk to him. Choji, said Naruto with the utmost seriousness, when you face Lee, never underestimate him. Although he can't use chakra, his taijutsu style utilizes the opening of the eight inner gates. 
He will probably use the primary and reverse lotus. Cho Ji widened his eyes then nodded in. Understanding. I won't underestimate him. Thank you for the warning Naruto, said Cho Ji as he walked down to the stadium. Asuma looked at both of them, as. They got ready for the match. The fight between Akamichi Choji and Rock Lee will now commence, said Asuma as he jumped out of the way. Then both rushed at each other to engage each other in a taijutsu. In the stands, however, Naruto frowned at the match as he saw Choji play into Lee's primary strength. Choji threw a punch while using his partial body expansion jutsu to maximize the damage. However, to Choji's surprise, Lee was able to not only stop his punch, but stop it with only a finger. Lee smiled and threw him into the arena wall. Choji got up and started weaving hand signs at a rapid rate. Earth style. Earth bullet. Choji shot five bullets made of mud towards Lee at high speeds. Lee just jumped over three of the bullets, however as. Soon as he landed he got hit square in the chest, pushing him back into the wall. But he merely got up and smiled as if that was nothing. Choji's eyes widened when he saw Lee get up as if nothing had even happened. How was he supposed to win? Gur, why the hell are my attacks not hurting him that much? I know that the Iron Fist Taijutsu style uses huge amounts of strength, but this is insane. I could drop weights and release all my seals, but I'm not used to that drastic power increase yet. I'm going to have to try and use my Earth style Taijutsu. The only problem is that I haven't mastered it completely. But it's my only chance to win this, thought Choji. Okay, yelled Choji, get ready to feel the wrath of my elemental Taijutsu style. Meet the Earth Bone Breaker Taijutsu style. In the stands Naruto's eyes widened. Choji was going to use his unfinished Taijutsu style? Why do that when he could just unseal his resistance? Seals and chakra restrainers as well as dropping all of his weights. In the background he heard Kakashi mutter, there's no such style. I would. No after all I've seen or heard of almost of all the Konoha Taijutsu styles. Naruto turned to Kakashi with a huge smirk on his face. Of course you wouldn't know Kakashi, said Naruto as he nodded to Shikamaru as if saying he was going to tell them a secret, after all that was a style that Choji created himself. In fact all of Team Hayate has created his own Taijutsu style. I don't know about Choji and Shikamaru, but I combined my parents' two Taijutsu styles. Then I added the element lightning to it. However, I am planning on adding my other affinities, water and wind to it as well. Kakashi's eyes widened. He looked at Naruto and Shikamaru and I smiled in an understanding way. Ah, I see, said Kakashi with a huge eye smile. You made this up to draw attention to yourself and away from Natsumi. However, you can stop it. We all know that you can't combine two styles without help. You're right Kakashi. I couldn't do it without help. But I did have help. The Yamanka, Akamichi, and Nara clans helped me with it. Not you, my father's student, not Yuaguo, my mother's student. No, it was someone who didn't even know my parents on a personal level. In return I helped. Their children begin the elemental manipulation. In a battle of raw lightning, I am the best out all the genin. Even Sasuke couldn't beat me in. Elemental manipulation. But let's see how Choji does in his fight with his new taijutsu style. Back in the arena Choji had already gathered earth chakra around him. He snapped his eyes open to show a dark brown that burned with rage. Instead of the usual light brown that showed compassion and kindness. Okay Lee, said Choji, as he got ready to launch himself at Lee, get ready to be defeated. He jumped towards Lee. Lee expected to be able to dodge the blow and throw a devastating punch to Choji's head and finish him in one blow. But when he dodged, earth erupted out of the ground hit. Lee in the stomach. Choji then delivered another devastating punch to his stomach and a heavy kick into the side of his face. Both hits were accompanied with the earth coming out of the ground and hitting Lee in the stomach and face, leaving him with serious injuries. Lee decided that it was time to bring out his first ace in the hole. He disappeared from where he was standing and reappeared right in front of Choji. He delivered an uppercut kick to Choji's face. As Choji flew into the air, Lee jumped right behind him and his bandages started to wrap around Choji. He started spiraling downwards at extreme velocities while yelling, primary lotus. After the smoke cleared, Lee was sitting there as if he was completely useless. Choji, unfortunately, was knocked out cold. Serutobi Asuma stepped forward to proclaim who had won. Winner of this match by knockout. Is Rock Lee. Okay everyone, the Hokage yelled, get down here. We have to decide the fights now. Anko, here has a box full of tickets. Each one has a number on it. You will draw numbers to decide who will fight whom. They all stepped forward to draw a number. After they had all drawn numbers. They all stepped forwards when called. The matchups were then put on paper and shown to everyone. 
It was then like this. Chunin Finals. Naruto, Natsumi. Sasuke, Gara, Neji, Lee. Tamari, Shikamaru. Konkuro, Shino. Okay, Minato said as he looked around to all the genin, you all have one month to prepare for the Chunin exams. Everyone looked at him, weirdly. One of the genin who raised his hand asked, why a month? And if the final task is a tournament, does that mean only one person gets? Promoted? Good question. I'm giving you a month. To prepare so that you can perfect your skills, learn some more jutsu. This way you'll have an edge over your opponents. The Chunin exams may be set up in a tournament style, but anyone can be promoted. Also there'll be people who are looking for what is the best village to employ. Good. Luck. Everyone but my children are dismissed. After all the other genin had left, Minato got up and went over to his son. Naruto, you are showing great promise as a shinobi. I have asked that Jiraiya train you for the chun, Minato stated before he was interrupted. No way in hell will I train with any one of the three bumbling buffoon ninjas. I already asked Asuma to give me the monkey scroll to sign, as it was. Monkey King Emna's idea that I become the next summoner of the monies. But after that I will be training outside of this village. So don't even try. Make me train with Jiraiya. Oh and Natsumi, I'll see you in the ring in a month. Good day to you Hokage-sama, replied Naruto in a pissed off voice. He then walked through the doors and slammed them shut, but not before glaring at Minato in a hateful way. This shocked both Natsumi too. No end. Why would Naruto call Minato Hokage-sama when it was unnecessary for him to call him that? Tusan. Why does Naruto always shut us out like that? It's not like we did anything that horrible to him, asked Natsumi. Oh you are so wrong Natsumi. We have wronged him in the most dreadful way. You have been mean to him in a very dreadful way by saying that. We didn't care. Kashina and I wronged him by neglecting him in favor of your training, replied Minato. Natsumi's eyes widened and she nodded. Okay Tusan. But I have a question. Since you can't train me, who will train me? I will get Jiraiya to train you instead. I think he also can start you on summoning toads. Natsumi nodded and started walking to the doors that Naruto had just slammed then went home to get ready for her own training with Jiraiya.